Hi, my name is Aaron Sloboda, and I am the high school pastor here at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Uh, my life started years ago. <laughs> I was born in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada, to a very Israeli father and a very Canadian mother. Um, we grew up as kids, I'm in the middle of five, and um, we grew up mostly in Arizona. And I went to a Lutheran school from pre-K to eighth grade. And during my time at Lutheran school, it was very difficult because on one hand, I had my teachers telling me that Jesus was God, and then my father at home telling me, you know, Jesus could be some long lost uncle, you're Jewish, right? And so um, it was a very difficult way to grow up and understand Jesus. And by the time eighth grade rolled around and I was done with the Lutheran school, the stories of Jesus were on par with the stories of the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. And it was just ideas that, you know, kind of kept kids in line. You know, don't, don't steal, don't cheat, don't do these things. And um, that's what the Bible was for me. That's what Jesus was for me. I went off at 14 years old to a boarding high school. I went to a military high school uh, out of my own volition. <laughs> I wanted to go, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. And so I went to this school and I figured that um, it was a great start. And I immediately found out that without these things guiding my life and without you know, looking at scripture and without these principles of Christianity that happened from pre-K to eighth grade for me, I, find out, I found out how deep my sin was. I found out how uh, how wretched I truly was. And at, at the time, I wouldn't have said that. I would have told you how fun my life was. And so um, I met the captain of the girls' volleyball team, and we hit it off. I loved it. I thought it was a great time. <laughs> uh, I was introduced to alcohol and to smoking and to drugs at the time. Um, I quickly failed out of high school. Uh, I dropped out before they kicked me out, and I tested out of high school after that. And because I was 15 and a half and I was done with high school, I decided it was time to go to college. And so I started going to college at uh, just, just shy of 16 years of age. And I met guys that were way older than me and in early 20s. And, you know, they were always going to parties and meeting girls. And I thought that was like the pinnacle of life. And so I started doing the same thing. And as I went to more and more parties, I realized that you know, the people who are really making money are the people who are funding these parties and, and bringing the drugs and doing all of these things. And so I quickly fell into that same trap. I started selling drugs and using drugs. And well, by my 15th time in the emergency room, I decided it was time to stop using drugs every day of the week and just do that for weekends. Uh, at the time, my family was moving to Mexico and so my dad was running from the law, but building a beach house in Mexico. And so I decided, let's go to Mexico. There's cheap weed and good surf. So I ended up in Mexico as well. Um, about a year of that time, that's what I did with my life. I, you know, I surfed by day and went to parties and, and used drugs and drank by night. And that was my life. And after about a year, my parents had uh, separated after 25 years of marriage. And my dad had kicked me out of the house. We got in a huge fight. And this missionary family took me in. And they were the only like other white family in Mexico. So it was a pretty cool experience. Um, and so Bob and April, their names, they, they took me in and they gave me a bed and they said, you can eat anything out of our fridge. And to any stoner, that's gospel already. You know, and so I decided um, I was gonna be there until I was told to leave. Um, and that's where God had intended me to be. I sat down one evening with Bob and April and we were watching baseball. And Bob started arguing with his wife, April. And they went back and forth and back and forth. And in my head, I'd been dating this girl for a year at the time. My parents had just been divorced after 25 years. Bob and April had been married 30 plus years. And I just thought, man, there is no relationship that makes it. And with seven words, April looked at her husband, Bob, and changed my life. She said, I am sorry and I love you. And he just said, I'm sorry and I love you too, which doesn't seem like a profound thing. But at the time when I was searching and really trying to understand 
the meanings, uh, deeper meanings of life and truth and, and love and relationships. They said something that was so key to me and um, it truly did change my life. That night I went to Bob's room and I said, Bob, what happened? You know, like what happened earlier on the couch when we were watching baseball and he had no clue what I was talking about. And so I walked him through his own marital fight and he, he looked at me and he said, Aaron, we're Christians. And I said, well, that's great. I saw your cross on the wall, like who cares? And he said, no, 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 I mean, I'm a real Christian. And he picked up his Bible and he flipped to Ephesians chapter five, verses 21 through 33. And he shared with me, Aaron, God has told me in his word what it means to be married, what it means to lead and to love my wife. And it, it, it shows her how to respect and submit to that. And he said, do you want to read it? I said, no thanks, Bob, no way. And um, he set the Bible down. And I went to bed so frustrated that night thinking, the answer can't be the Bible. The answer can't be that, oh, we, we, just, we just believe in God and it solved everything. So I went to bed so angry. I woke up that next morning and I went back to Bob and I asked Bob, like, Bob, what, what is this book to you? Is it just a book to keep your wife in line or is this actually the word of God? And he was very gracious with me and he said, Aaron, I believe that to be the word of God. And so I just said, okay, Bob, well, then I'm going to read it. I'm in your house. You offered me a place to stay. I'm just going to read it. And so I started reading it. And that day I read Genesis. And the next day I read Exodus. And the next day Leviticus. And a couple weeks go by and I'd finish the Bible. And I remember asking Bob at the time, like, where can I learn more about this? Because there was a lot of stuff I just didn't understand. And he's like, well, church. <laughs> And so I end up going to church. Actually, they were housing missionaries at the time. And this missionary, his name was Greg, he really took me under his wing and, and, and really was discipling me. And he said, Aaron, let me, let me take you to church. And so we go to church. And I remember walking into this church that my mom used to drag me into. And I remember her dragging me into this church, either high or drunk or still hung over. And I'm in this church now. And I'm just thinking like, I'm going to put a hoodie on, tighten it up tight, and, and just leave a little peephole like this. And no one's going to recognize it's me. And I can just sit in the back and this will be a great time, right? And as I'm thinking through this, the senior pastor comes right out and walks straight up to me. And Pastor Mike at Calvary Chapel Rosarito, <laughs> he comes up and says, uh, what are you doing here as a proper shepherd of his flock? And I just said, look, I'm, I'm here to just know the Bible better. And he just said, okay, well, sit down and I'll, I'll, let's talk after service. As the Lord would have it during this service, he's just finishing up the book of Ephesians, especially chapter 5. And he's talking about verses 21 through 33. And as he's teaching through this portion, it's, it just finally clicked for me, this one portion that clicked. He said, unless you know Jesus as his church, unless you have that relationship with Jesus, you will never have that relationship in your marriage. And it just made sense to me. It just clicked. And I remember thinking that whole time with the baggage I had from my past, I, I remember thinking, well, I'm never going to say I love you to a dead Jew. And as the Lord would have it, he starts preaching on the resurrection. And so now that that was no longer an issue in my head, I just thought, well, I'm not going to be one of those weird Christians that like, you know, they stand up during the time that they sing worship and they're like, I love you, Jesus. Like, that's not going to be me. I'm never going to do that. And he gave this altar call and, and, and asked us to respond to the leading of the Spirit and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And I remember thinking like, this is so bizarre. I'm never going to do that. And I hear people clapping in this church. I'm like, what is happening? I look around and people are clapping like, amen, brother. And I'm on my feet um, accepting Jesus. And I just thought, oh, no, I'm one of those weird Christians. <laughs> Well, that night I went home with Greg and we're at Bob and April's house and I sit down and Greg offered something so beautiful to me. He said, Aaron, I know you've been through a lot of stuff in your life and I believe in where the Bible speaks about spiritual warfare that there could actually be some demonic issues in your life. And I remember sitting down and him asking me, um, Aaron, would you allow me to pray for you? And would you pray with me 
that the Lord would seal you with his promised Holy Spirit. And I remember sitting down and thinking this. This was my immediate context. I thought, I've already done weird stuff today. I might as well finish the job and do the rest of the weird stuff. And so I just sat down. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know what to expect. And I remember him praying next to me. He put his hand on my shoulder and just started praying. And he left a moment in his prayer to say, Aaron, would you speak with your God? And I remember how profound that statement was. Just speak with your God and him defining what prayer was for me. And I remember praying this. I just remember saying, God, I, I believe that I've accepted Jesus. And if this is what you want for my life, then I ask that you would seal me with your Holy Spirit. And I didn't have this moment that was just like, I am the Lord your God. And like, you know, pixie dust fell on me and I was all of a sudden, you know, this, this rush of wind and fire ignited in me. I didn't have that kind of moment. But I do remember this. I remember feeling as if I just had taken this backpack off, this heavy load. I remember feeling like I could breathe deeply and calmly. And I remember feeling like no one was chasing me, that no one was looking for money from me. No one was looking for drugs or or a party or anything. I felt, for the first time, I felt peace. And when I felt that, I realized that is what God has intended for me. God has intended for me to live in this relationship, this peace with God. And so since then, I've had some phenomenal years. Uh, by, by God's grace, I've been able to get married. My wife and I have been married for five years this year. We have two beautiful sons. We've had the opportunity to go to Bible college. Uh, I'm now in seminary in a master's program. And, and God has allowed me to just really dive deep into his word and be a part of the church. And so now we oversee the high school ministry here at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, and we are just enthralled with all that God is doing. Thanks for hearing me.